I'm here to learn and every time I uh, go to any conference, I always take something, um, take home message. And I think um, um, in this conference, you know, this lemon thing was something that I've never heard of before. I must admit, baki, most of the things I've done, kafi bude ho gaye, to is why just say we have done those things. Dr. Mayon is pioneer in so many things. When the first time in Pakistan was a thread, they had the first workshop in Karachi. Yes, that was way back in 2005. 2005. Yes, yes. When the contour was done. I started contour in 2003. Yes, so that was the first concept. But that was non-absorbable threads. And some of my patients who had those are still maintaining the results. So when they did it in Karachi, बड़ी मुश्किल से इन तक उस वक्त पहुंचे, लेकिन that was a excellent or marvelous experience. My problem is, you see, when we are doing it, how much should be done safely? What is what should be done and what should not be done? Um, so it's the assessment of the donor area, and that will help to decide what procedure do you want to do. I personally think that a person who is doing a hair restoration should be enabled to do both the strip and the FUE. If he or she is only doing FUE, then there is a personal biasism which can go against the, in my opinion, the ethics of uh, informed decision making. Because now when you are limited to one procedure, you will only tell the half truth, not the whole truth. So, I do not have the conflict of interest. When we talk about the safe donor area, we talk about relative safe donor area. And relative safe donor area means it's the area which is right in the middle of a hair and which is um, just above, if you touch your occipital protuberance, it's just above that thing. So, the 50% of the hair can be harvested before the donor area can become noticeably depleted. So that is one thing. So you have got enough of that. But remember one thing. When we are removing, when we are doing an FUE, it's cherry picking. So you are technically picking all the threes and fours and twos of it and you are leaving behind ones. So that theory of 50% of um, um, FUE harvest does not hold through. It should be at least 25%, not more than that. So when we talk about the risk taking of uh, um, in, in, in um, um, these things, so you need to understand that the safe donor area is in the middle and you the upper one and the lower one are the high risk area. So you want to make sure you, you don't do that thing. When we assess, we need to assess the three areas, the temporal, occipital and parietal. And we want to see that what is the minimum coverage. Minimum coverage is the number of hairs per square centimeters times the diameter in millimeter. Once you do that thing, you need to have a minimum coverage of six. If you have got a minimum coverage of six, your results would be very decent. So if you do more than that, you will have an effect of which is like a thinning effect, which I personally believe, although some surgeons think that by reducing the donor area and bringing it to the top, you are equally distributing that thing. But I believe the normal thinning process or aging process is you have got a thicker on the back and thinner on the top. So it looks more of a natural aging process than to do that thing. So, but the most important factor is you want to understand what you have in total amount of hair, the grafts, the type of grafts, the surface area of the strip or FUE, and the miniaturization rate. Now, miniaturization rate is a single most important factor. If you have got more than 15% of, 25% of miniaturization in the donor area, and that is why tri trichoscopy of the donor area is important, that means the patient is not fit for the surgery. He or she has got uh, what we call as uh, diffuse unpatterned alopecia. Or sorry, diffuse pattern alopecia. Now, when we, are tr when we are trying to extract the grafts in a lifetime of patients, you have got more to harvest from the strip than to F FUE. So in my opinion, strip method is much stronger than the other. You need to assess the density. 
you need to assess and there are different kinds of uh, average density in this part of the world we are more or less about 80 to 85 uh, hair per square or graph per square uh, centimeter you also assess about the hair caliber which is very important and why it is important when the total volume of the hair determines the visual impact doubling the hair density will double the hair volume but when you double the hair diameter you quadruple the hair volume so that is why when you are harvesting and you harvest a good um, uh, caliber um, graphs then your overall transfer of uh, hair would look better the volume would look better but one thing which people do not uh, um, really give importance to is the length of the hair so what happens in the length of the hair you you can't really uh, you know um, give that much importance the diameter is if you increase by 0.01 millimeter which is about 10 micron you can improve the overall coverage by 36 percent now this is where the length is important the hair length can be hextupled or grown even longer that means that as long as the hair grows you keep on increasing the coverage the same patients on the upper right and the lower right just by reducing the length you can increase the visibility of the um, skin so you take the hair curl and the color in um, um, you know in mind if you have got a white hair it blends with the skin so white hair people with the lesser number of grafts will have a better uh, looks coming to the donor density anything less than 50 per 50 grafts per square centimeter is not ideal for the surgery and this is what i was mentioning so, sorry 15 percent so up to five percent you will have excellent result anything 10 percent and above you need to be very careful about that this is the graft uh, or the or the um, sort of uh, parameter where the thinning process starts anything above 50 percent is that is when thinning starts you need to assess your donor area and then you decide why fue now this is what you don't want for your patients over harvesting so in my personal study i thought that more pers most persons will take between 20 to 50 grafts per session so when we did a study we showed that every surgeon would take about 50 to 70 percent harvest if they are not careful and this is where the bradley wolf said that they're exploring the limits of the follicular extraction and this is our personal study where we thought that maximum reduction in one uh, session is 38 percent so if you are doing two sessions you can actually remove and including the uh, transaction rate you are actually removing between 50 to 70 percent of the hair or transferring that which means the donor area will become too depleted like look at like this we have just removed two grafts over here and see the emptiness on the other side so that is what you need to keep in mind so if i removed all these cherry picking thick ones just imagine how much thinness you can leave on the donor area now would this look good no it won't look good this is the donor area between the fue which is at the upper part and the fut or strip method in the lower part a beautiful paper by uh, 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 Bradley Wolf, but Jerry Cooley mentioned this is one of his patients. So once you do that thing, the other important factor is strip method. You need to understand how to do a strip method so that your scars are really minimal. And then the important thing in the strip method, in FUE, we are reducing the density. In strip method, we are reducing the width. So you can see the width reduction in, in such patients. And then when you combine them, which is the next one, one of the factors which is important is what you do today, you will be haunted back by that patients in years to come. And this is what uh, Dr. Anger said, what I and all my colleagues had not realized was the ultimate severity of hair becomes sparser as well as becoming progressively finer within areas that appeared quite thick when we had first opted on them. This is important because this helps you all that your patient should be on lifelong some kind of medical treatment. So what happens? There is a generalized thinness, there is a, a thinning out which is 
because of apoptosis, oxidative stress, process, stress responses brought by the aging process. This is one of my patients came back to me after 10 years. See the strip method and see how much the density loss is there. So the factors that you look are these four ones and then you decide that the most important thing when you are these days I'm doing is the improve doing the donor capacity and combining the two treatments. This one thing will give you the total viability of the donor area and if you see between the FUE uh, if you do you can harvest 7200 grafts if you do only the strip method you can harvest 96 but if you combine them, you can go up to 13,000 or 14,000 grafts. So that is the beauty of doing both of them together. This patient had a previous two FUTs and then you can do an FUE, but now you can combine them in one go. So all these patients had one surgery and you can cover more or less everything in one go. This is, I feel, is the next future in one session because most of the patients are traveling so you do the combination so my take home message is if you are a hair restorative surgeon you need to learn both but if you can't learn both you need to pair with someone who can do strip and you can do FUE or vice versa in that way your practice would be a balanced practice would give the best options to the patients, you would not be procedure biased. So once you do that thing, I think you will really benefit from that. And I also invite you to our next conference, which is in May 2nd to 5th and to 2024. Some of our faculties, some of other will join. And with that, I really thank you all.